Wayfinders 1.0 release is now here. The game is fully launched and is out of early access. So you might be a new player who's jumping in for the first time and are kind of learning the ropes of the game. And I have a few videos uh, on the channel to help you kind of get started, but this one's gonna be a big one because it's gonna be going over how to unlock all of the Wayfinders that are currently available in the game. There's eight total. You're gonna be getting some early on just for doing the tutorial bits, but a lot of the other characters you have to unlock as you progress the game. I'll give you a brief little snippet on each character and how to recommend like kind of getting started with them. But you know, the game is pretty open. You know, there's a lot of different weapons to choose from. All the characters have lots of different play styles you can kind of like build into. So, you know, ultimately find the stuff that works for you. But you know, these are just sort of my preferences and to kind of help you get started. So first up, there's the three characters you're gonna be choosing from in the initial tutorial. You'll kind of do the opening tutorial. You'll be given the choice of three different characters. Don't stress about this decision too much because you know, literally after finishing this tutorial, you'll do a couple intro missions. You'll get one that's called a new Wayfinder. You'll be just given the other two Wayfinders you didn't choose at the start here to play as as well. So you get pretty all, all three of them pretty much like, you know, probably I would say like 30, 40 minutes into the game. Really, it's it's, it's pretty quick. So, you know, to go over the, each character, first up is Wingrave. I'd say he's definitely the easiest character to just pick up and play as and start as because he is kind of your traditional tank and, and healer hybrid sort of class where he has a lot of abilities that can heal himself to keep him into the, in the fray for longer. But there's also abilities that let you heal your allies that you're playing with if you're playing co-op with people. You know, he has a lot of abilities that can help heal other players. So he can just play that role and, you know, he has taunting abilities to grab enemy aggro and stuff like that. You know, he's that kind of classic tank. I definitely recommend building into ability power because again, that improves his healing for uh, his abilities and stuff like that you're gonna do on other, for players and yourself. So that can definitely help. He definitely is, uh, I, I prefer using melee weapons with him so he can excel really well with like swords and shields or like the two-handed heavy swords. He's a lot of fun using uh, with that as well. Even stuff like dual daggers can work with Wingrave as well. Again, I think he's like a pretty easy pick up and play character. So I definitely think he's the easiest one to just start playing with if you wanna get you know, kind of comfortable and familiar with the game. After that, you also have Nis. She is kind of your rogue DPS dealing class out the gate. She has her abilities are pretty much her strong suit. She has this like kind of shadow step ability that lets you kind of rush through enemies. And then an after image kind of follows you through that dash um, that does a bunch of damage in enemy, enemy, any, any enemies in its way. Uh, so it can be pretty potent. It can, it can, it can dish out a lot of damage fast. Her super lets her do that. Like for, I think it's like 10, 15 seconds, just to that um, as much as you can mash it out. And so it's pretty fun. And again, she's like a burst DPS character um, and can be really strong. So again, I would say build into her abilities or our ability power, rather the, that main stat to buff up that damage. And I would say from there, it, it is kind of on you to how comfortable you are with like, you know, having blocks and parries downs with your weapons um, to kind of to kind of brace it. Cause she is a pretty squishy um, character compared to some of the others like lower health stats and she can uh, go down pretty easily if you don't have her kind of kitted out well with HP and defense. But you know, if you want to sacrifice a little bit of those for a little bit more damage because you feel like comfortable enough like blocking and parrying, uh, she can be pretty effective. Next up, uh, the last three starting characters is Silo. I would say he is kind of your range class. He has like some debuffs and can do a lot of damage over time effects. So he can be pretty effective in battle for sure. You know, he, I say again, he kind of sells with ranged uh, weapons in my opinion. I use the Tempest shotgun, uh, which you get pretty early into the, the game. That is a pretty effective weapon on him. And I also like, you know, some of the other like rifles and stuff as well on him, which can be pretty good as well. Like things like the, the rune cannons, which you'll get a little bit later into the game can be pretty good with him. I think, you know, for his abilities and stuff, I think building a little bit into ability power, but mostly into crit rating and crit power can be pretty effective uh, stat to build into with Silo because one of his uh, big abilities is, is his fire bombs, which can be paired with uh, like this oil slick attack he also has where he drops like a big oil uh, puddle on the ground. If enemies go into it, they get slowed and get like, you know, oiled up <laughs> for lack of a better term. But if you throw the fire bombs into that, um, you know, you get the, uh, you basically uh, get a big fiery explosion 
does a decent does that explosion does a, a decent amount of damage but enemies also take fire like burn over time damage as well and if you build into crit rating and crit power that gives that burn over time uh, more potential to hit those crit uh, damage uh, spikes so you can just you know dish out a lot of damage really fast with uh, building into crit with silo so that can be a lot of fun i think he's also pretty decent for solo players because he has an ability that uh, drops like a clone that can aggro enemies away from him if you're getting too overwhelmed uh, in a combat scenario and you you can have like some breathing room with that clone as well so you know pretty fun play style there i i, I like him overall and again he can be pretty pretty potent with the the crit damage he can he can do so those are your three starting characters. The remaining cast of Wayfinders, you're gonna be unlocking through the rest of the game, either by doing like certain bosses or they drop from certain sources in the game. So let me go over all of those for you. So I'm gonna go in order that I think you'll potentially be able to get some of these characters the earliest and some of the latest. Uh, so let's get into it. I would say like you can, you can get them all fairly early because like, you know, the whole game itself is, you know, 20 to 30 hours. You know, if you know where to look, you can probably get most of the characters within, you know, five hours, I would say. Um, but, you know, they're all relatively um, straightforward to unlock. You just got to know where to look and where to go. So let's let's get into it. So the first one you could potentially find is Senja. She's another tank class in this. She's kind of more of a brawler into the freight tank. She has like, you know, a lot of abilities that will kind of taunt enemies to her because she is building up this crowd meter and the higher the crowd meter is the more damage she can output with some of her abilities and some of her other things and the, you know that's what you the kind of loop you want to do is you know get into a crowd of enemies start charging up your attacks or are doing your your kind of taunts and that'll build your meter if enemies are hitting you in that period you can also build her into getting uh, healing st stacks of healing uh, on herself that you can uh, get by taking damage as well so that is great for keeping her alive in those scenarios and, and, and in the fray so she can be a lot of fun you'll unlock her by finding deceiver chests early on in the game so you know if you're running you could be finding her as soon as the first lost zone you potentially do if you find these deceiver sort of mimic chest enemies they basically just like like the big kind of wooden chest you find normally that you can open for gold but this one will turn into an enemy if you defeat those she has a, her summoning stone as a chance to drop from that you know, I, I, that's how I got her. It's it's fairly easy if, you know, you, you know, it is RNG dependent. So you might have to do a couple runs and hopefully find one early into the game. But, you know, I did not have too much issue finding them. And my runs specific, specifically of these early dungeons in the ruins, like the Codex Hall or the Undercroft uh, Lost Zones, I was able to get those uh, fairly quickly by just doing those. If your RNG is really bad or you don't want to worry about that, having to rerun stuff too much, um, you'll, you can just continue the main quest and get to the Grand Deceiver Maris boss fight. It's like a big version of the chest. It's a boss fight that you'll get later into the game. She's a guaranteed drop from that the first time you complete it. So, you know, you can get there, but I will say that's like much later in the game. That's like one of the last few couple bosses you fight in the main story campaign. So just keep that in mind. Next up, a character you can get pretty fairly early is Kairos. I would say he is this game's closest equivalent to a mage. Like, you know, there isn't like, you know, a traditional mage ranged character with like magic spells and stuff like that. You know, Kairos kind of has this like dark chaos magic that he can sort of do. Um, that's like a big thing with him is like building into ability power with these rakes he can create. That's the what the abilities called where he does these big like energy like slashes on the ground. And if you get enemies in them, it does a pretty decent amount of damage. But if you build it, uh, if you go deeper into his kind of like, you know, upgrades and things like that later in, you can make it so you can make more and more of those. So like you can start with a stack of like three of them. But, you know, if you build it properly, you can have like eight or nine of them by by fully upgrading him and they can also heal you as you do them. So you can just be throwing them out left and right and be getting back to full health almost immediately uh, if you build out properly. So you can be a pretty strong character uh, in that regard with uh, doing like ability damage and stuff like that. To unlock Kairos, you will be looking for these void um, chests that are in certain activities. The easiest thing way that I, I think to get to him is just unlock this void dungeon boss zone, which you'll again get not too far into the, the campaign back by a couple hours in. Just run this a couple times and, and just kind of search every nook and cranny for these void dungeons. They're pretty they're pretty plentiful in here and he has a chance to drop from these chests. Again, I think it took me like two runs of this dungeon to get a Kairos drop. Um, so it's fairly easy, but you know, just you know, just keep a lookout for for that. 
Next up is Venomous. She can drop from a world boss in the Highlands. Again, you get to the Highlands pretty early on. That's when you unlock the co-op feature in the game. It's, the, it's the, kind of the first big open zone of the game. Once you get to the Highlands, you can head over to the Codex Halls and then uh, follow this path down to this kind of uh, pit arena that's underground. And you can drop these worm baits. These will find you. These you can find throughout the Highlands. And then you can take those to, to activate this world boss fight. I will say if you're, you can get to this pretty early in the game, you know, it's pretty much as soon as you get to the Highlands, but you will definitely not be leveled enough to probably defeat this boss. I don't think it's like, you know, that the boss will does a ton of damage, but it's more the boss just has a lot of health and you only have so much time to defeat them. So, you know, it'll be pretty tough early on, but I think, you know, you, if you come back, you know, a little bit more geared up, or maybe if you're willing to, you know, head into the Wayfinder Discord or, or find friends to play with, I think you can take down the boss sooner. But, you know, it is a guaranteed drop of Venomous from this boss. So as long as you take your, take the this Night Maw boss down early on in the game, you'll be able to unlock Venomous. Venomous is the other character who excels in healing. All of her poison attacks, you know, have some kind of healing effect either for herself or if you're playing with other other players uh, they'll spread you can spread the healing around with some of her poison abilities again similar to silo i definitely recommend building her into ability power for that better healing but also you know in the same way she can do a bunch of damage over time like silo you can build into crit power and crit ratings to make that uh, crit damage pop off with her poison damage over time effects to do pretty uh, pretty decent amount of damage as well so she's a pretty strong damage dealer, but also uh, pretty good for healing and support as well. So good all around character uh, Venomous is. She's a lot of fun. Next up is Grendel. Admittedly, I've not played too much as Grendel. He, he was kind of a character that came out kind of in the midst of the transformation of the game uh, from its previous version into this Echoes version in early access. I've been kind of working through leveling all the characters to max and I have not gotten to Grendel yet, but he seems a lot of fun. Uh, he's kind of that tried and true Berserker class. If you played other RPGs where he has, you know, his spinning axe kind of moves and kind of, you know, has like a lot of leaps and leaps and slams and smashes that are that are cool. Um, so, so he's definitely a lot of fun. I think he excels in like building into break power, like kind of stun enemies and deal a bunch of damage really fast. So that, that's kind of the vibe I get, but you know, again, I've not played with him too much. To unlock Grendel, you're gonna to head to the Blood Spawn boss hunt. This is a early one of the early bosses you'll fight in the game as well. You just need to defeat this boss. He's a guaranteed drop from that one. And last, but certainly not least, is Laura. She's the brand new Wayfinder for 1.0. Since she's brand, brand new released, I have not played much as her, but we did learn that she is um, unlocked from the Trial of Lingering Light boss hunt. Yeah, and that's like pretty much like I pretty think you can, I think honestly the blood spawn boss and the trial of lingering light are nearly back to back boss hunts. So you get these two characters pretty fast early in the game, which is pretty nice if you just kind of keep following that main story quest. Uh, from the little I've seen of Laura, she seems to be kind of, you know, she has, she's empowered by this like spirit monster. Her abilities seem really cool because it seems like she can kind of power up her, her individual moves. Uh, by channeling this power um, if through a meter and then depending on what how many you know levels of channeling you have the, the abilities will be more potent so it definitely seems like she'll be good to build into ability power maybe like break power too potentially you know and also her her, her ultimate transforms her in fully into a big spirit monster that looks pretty dope and I, I, I'll be curious to see like if it's worthwhile what kind of worthwhile stats to buff that sort of damage that spirit can do in that form. So we'll just have to see. Um, she seems pretty fun. I'm definitely gonna play a bunch with her more. I probably will have like a follow-up video in the coming days, kind of giving my overall thoughts on the, the 1.0 content and all that pretty soon. Uh, but that's probably gonna do it for this video that kind of went over every Wayfinder for you, how to unlock them. I hope this helped. If you're jumping into the game for the first time, I'd love to hear what you think of the game so far and as you're kind of learning the new game, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you're looking for more Wayfinder content and coverage, I do some of that here. I do some guides, but I mostly cover like news when they get release updates on the game and what's coming for the game. Hopefully we'll be able to see more of that with Wayfinder now that it's gonna be fully out. And I think a lot more people will be playing it and see how awesome the game has become through its kind of trials and tribulations of early access. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.